Hello, welcome to Midday Prayer. New opening, which is pretty hip and cool, especially for the Westminster Confession of Faith. Thank you very much to, to Thomas Kung, who uh, made that wonderful music, and um, thank you very much that he was able that he was willing to let me use it for that intro. And that's specifically for those who are watching live so you have a little bit of time to, to go on. Um, I apologize if you watched the midday prayer. Um, had some technical difficulties and apparently it dropped halfway through, so I apologize for that. But hopefully I've gotten that cleared up and we can go on with the Westminster Confession of Faith. We are on chapter 7. And that is of God's covenant with man. So we've talked kind of about creation. We've talked about the fall of man. And um, now we are talking about God's covenant with man. Of course, uh, when we say man, um, when the Westminster Confession says man, it means humanity. Because at the time, it was, English was a, what is it, male default language. So if you say man, you mean all of humanity. Today, that's not exactly how we speak, but we still can understand it in that way. So let's start with a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the chance to gather together to read these words. We ask that your spirit would inspire us as we seek to understand your covenant with us. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Chapter 7, of God's covenant with man. Number 1, the distance between God and the creature is so great that although reasonable creatures do owe obedience unto him as their creator, yet they could never have any fruition of him as their blessedness and reward, but by some voluntary condescension on God's part, which he hath been pleased to express by way of covenant. So, the distance between God and us, his creation, is just unfathomably large. There's no way that we could even um, begin to understand God unless he uh, voluntarily condescended, or in other words, sort of lowered himself more to our realm so that we could understand him. Uh, we only know something about God because he chooses to impart, uh, to reveal himself to us. And he has to reveal himself to us in a way that we can understand. Now, ultimately, and we may talk about this in this chapter, um, the ultimate way that God can condescends or empties himself, as Philippians says, um, is through Jesus Christ. Um, there's a great story about a man who didn't want to go to church, and his family all went, and you've probably heard this before, so I'm just going to say it really quick. Um, he didn't want to go to church, didn't want to go to church. It's Christmas Eve, I think. And he's sitting at home, and they're all, they're all going to church, and he's like, what's the, what's the point? Well, there are these birds who are out near the barn, and it's snowing, and there's a terrible snowstorm. He thinks they're going to freeze and so he opens up the barn and they don't go in obviously um, and he tries to shoo them in and they don't want to go in because why are you putting us in this weird place and he thinks well if only I could become a bird then I could lead them in oh I get it I understand now right that sort of thing so God condescends to us so that we can know who he is Number two, the first covenant made with man was a covenant of works, wherein life was promised to Ab Adam and in him to his posterity upon condition of perfect and personal obedience. So the first covenant was one of works. You do something and I will give you something, right? Um, so God set it up with Adam, you know, you need to have person. Perfect personal obedience. Well, they didn't do that very well, right? Number three, man by his fall, having made himself incapable of life by that covenant, 
the Lord was pleased to make a second, commonly called the covenant of grace, wherein he freely offered unto sinners life and salvation by Jesus Christ, requiring of them faith in him, that they may be saved and promising to give unto all those that are ordained unto life his Holy Spirit to make them willing and able to believe. So first covenant was works you have to do perfect. And that worked when they were still in the garden, but then they fell. So God made a second covenant with humanity, um, a covenant of grace, where he freely offers salvation by Jesus Christ. Now, those who came before Christ didn't necessarily know that that was what was going on, but that's actually what was going on. Number four, this covenant of grace is frequently set forth in the scripture by the name of a testament. In reference to the death of Jesus Christ, the testator, and to the everlasting inheritance with all things belonging to it therein bequeathed. So another word that we might use for this covenant is a testament. Um, so I apologize. So the first covenant, what, it also includes the Old Testament. Um, it was still this covenant of works. So God gives the Levitical law and says, if you do this, it's sin. If you do this sin, you make this sacrifice, and then you can um, have that paid off. But it was all about doing something, right? Covenant of grace, the second testament, the second, the new testament covenant uh, was made of grace. Number five, this covenant was differently administered in the time of the law and in the time of the gospel. Under the law, it was administered by promises, prophecies, sacrifices, circumcision, the paschal lamb, and other types of ordinances delivered to the people of the Jews, all for signifying Christ to come, which were for that time significant, uh, sufficient and efficacious through the operation of the Spirit to instruct and build up the elect in faith in the promised Messiah by whom they had full remission of sins and eternal salvation, and is called the Old Testament. So, going back to my first explanation, that's actually correct. So, the second, the second covenant made with humanity is grace. And in the Old Testament, it is in one way, right? So the people, even though they're doing something, even though they're making sacrifices... All of those things are foreshadowing of the actual sacrifice that is to be made in Christ. Number six, under the gospel, when Christ, the substance, was exhibited, the ordinances in which this covenant is dispensed are the preaching of the word and the administration of the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper, which though fewer in number and administered with more simplicity and less outward glory, yet in them it is held forth in more fullness, evidence, and spiritual efficacy. To all nations, both Jews and Gentile, and is called the New Testament. There are not, therefore, two covenants of grace differing in substance, but one and the same under various dispensations. So, under the New Testament, this, this covenant of grace that began actually um, in the Old Testament after the fall um, is given to us in a new way. We actually see uh, the one who makes that covenant. We see the sacrifice that is made, um, and so we understand it in a new way. Instead of the sort of sacraments or the um, ways of understanding these things, the way that these this covenant is testified to us under the law, which was that Paschal Lamb and those sacrifices, all of that sort of stuff. In the New Testament, it is the Lord's Supper and baptism, um, which even though there's fewer things, they actually express to us more um, clearly 
what the gospel is. So, um, so there we go. So God's covenant with man is this. It started out with grace, or it started out with works, um, but we were also in a position where we could fulfill that. When we were in the garden, when we were in that state of perfection, when we were already in that righteous uh, relationship with God, you know, Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the evening. That was fine. But when we fell, we no longer had the ability to be covered by that sort of covenant. And so God was pleased to condescend to us and give us a new covenant that is grace. In the Old Testament, God expressed that covenant of grace to us actually through the law. And even though that sounds like works righteousness, what we really understand now is that um, the, the grace was being imputed to them already because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that had not actually been made yet, but was still efficacious. Um, and the things that they did were almost like sacraments. It was ways for them to understand what was going to happen. They were being prepared for the Messiah through the law, through the sacrifices, through the, um, through the celebration of, of the Paschal Lamb, Passover. Um, all of those things were in preparation for what Christ was going to do on the cross. In the New Testament, we understand that law, of, that covenant of grace in a new and um, maybe fuller way. We understand it more than, you know, we talked about on Sunday that, that uh, Nathan and God offered David forgiveness when he confessed his sins. Well, that forgiveness came through Christ. David just didn't know that, right? He didn't understand that, probably. Um, but God did. In the New Testament, that covenant of grace is imputed to us, that, that covering of our sins because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And because of that, um, oh, and, and the signs for that are the sacraments, the Lord's Supper and baptism. So I apologize, you know, the downside of not reading ahead is because I'm trying to figure it out. But at the same time, you get to kind of go through that journey with me. Um, I'm not an expert on this. I'm just a guy who's sitting down and trying to understand this stuff just like you are. Um, or a person. I was being gender uh, <laughs> uh, male uh, default, right? Uh, you are a person who is trying to figure this stuff out just like I am. And we're figuring this stuff out together. Anyways, thank you for joining me for mid for uh, confessions for today. Join me tomorrow for confessions and midday prayer. Go to our website, faithpresbyterian.sc.com, for more information um, about who we are, what we do, all that sort of stuff. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. Like this video, share it with someone else. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments below. Also, a special again, a thank you to Thomas who made the music. And um, if you have a chance, go and check out. There's a link in the comments below that you can check out some other of his music and different things that he does. It's, it's all really good. I've enjoyed looking it over. So um, thank you so much for joining me today and have a blessed day.